everyone, Eva here. It's Sleep Tip Tuesday, so today we're going to talk all about pacifiers, like this one. So, pacifiers are a really interesting device because one day they can be your biggest savior as a parent to a young baby, and then the next day they are the bane of your existence and all you want to do is burn every single one of these within a 500 mile radius of your home. So let me explain, you know, how you might, why they might be your biggest savior and then why, you know, they might be a really big problem for you. So pacifiers, generally speaking, are fantastic for newborn babies and really little babies, you know, specifically under the age of three, four months. The reason for that is because newborn babies are born with a very strong sucking reflex, where when they're sucking on something, it really helps calm them down. Um, and stop them from crying and fussing really. So you give them one of these and you know they might be fussing like crazy and then they're able to, to calm down. If you're breastfeeding, it can really help you, prevent you from becoming a human pacifier, which can be really, really exhausting after a while. So pacifiers for the little ones are fantastic. It's also great to try offering your newborn baby a pacifier because there's actually been some research correlating the use of pacifiers to a decreased risk in SIDS. Um, the theory behind this correlation is that when newborn babies sleep with a pacifier, they stay in a later stage of sleep. It prevents them from going into a very, very deep sleep, which can be sometimes a little bit dangerous for a newborn baby because if something is, for example, obstructing their breathing, it'll be a lot more challenging for them to wake themselves up than if, uh, if they're in a later stage of sleep thanks to the pacifier. So that's the current theory around why pacifiers might be correlated to a decreased risk in SIDS. Now, when this pacifier becomes a bane of your existence, it depends on the baby, but it tends to become problematic somewhere around that four or five month mark. Now, that's typically the age where babies are older, they're more mature, they're more aware of their environment and their surroundings, and they're aware if they fell asleep with a pacifier in their mouth, and now they're waking up, and the pacifier is no longer there, it's no longer in their mouth. The reason why this is a very big problem for you is because your four month old, chances are, does not have the fine motor skills to be able to pick up the pacifier and put it back in his mouth. So you end up having to do that work for him instead. Um, and which ultimately ends up defining this pacifier as a sleep prop. A sleep prop by sheer definition is a, a, a device or um, something, whether it's nursing or walking, you know, something that your baby relies on to fall asleep that he cannot replicate on his own or, you know, grab, grab for himself on his own and re relies on you to do the work for him. So once your baby is older and has those fine motor skills, then the pacifier should not be a problem. It, it doesn't have to be a problem because once your baby is eight, nine, 10 months, maybe even earlier than that, um, she'll be able to grab it on her own and put it back in her mouth by herself. So it's really this, um, this four to five to six month period of time where the pacifier can be a really big problem. So if that's the case, you've got two main options moving forward. Option number one is you can wait it out. So if the situation isn't too bad, if maybe you're only waking up once, maybe twice, and all you have to do is just stick the pacifier right back in and go right back to sleep, and it's really not so disruptive to anyone, then you can always wait it out waited out for that magical day to come where your older baby does learn how to, to figure out how to place it back in her mouth on her own. And to further encourage that, what I might have you, you know, encourage you to do is place your baby on the play mat during playtime and sprinkle, let's say, 10 pacifiers around her so that she can practice putting it in her mouth for her. If, on the other hand, your baby is waking up every two hours, for this darn pacifier, um, or maybe maybe waking up a little bit more frequently, a little bit less frequently, but either way, it's extremely disruptive to you and your sleep and everyone's sleep, then you're probably going to want to teach your baby how to fall asleep without it. And trust me, 
it's very, very doable. Um, with my younger one, with my younger daughter, unlike my older one who was barely, you know, waking up for this at all, my younger one was waking every two hours and it was very disruptive. She was uh, somewhere between four and five months where I removed it from the equation at bedtime and she learned how to fall asleep without it. Um, removing a cold turkey is, is usually your, your best bet. There really isn't much that you can do in between. Um, and it was not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I was, as a parent, I was, you know, very nervous and freaking out. And, you know, she did just fun. There was a little bit of crying. I, I implemented a sleep training method of my choice and remained consistent with it. And she got it. Now, once she was older, and this is what, you know, you can do, I still kept it in. I still kept it for her during the day. You can always do that. Teaching your baby how to fall asleep without the pacifier doesn't mean that you need to be getting rid of it cold turkey. So I did keep it for her during the day for when she's fussy and when she's in the car and whatnot. Um, and then when she was older, I did reintroduce it because I found it to be a very helpful, um, a very helpful sleep tool for her once she was able to replace it on her own. So to sum up, Pacifiers are great when your baby's younger. They're great when your baby's older. It's that middle stage where you might get into trouble until they strengthen their fine motor skills. So if that's the case, you're either gonna need to just wait it out until they get a bit older or you're going to need to teach your baby how to fall asleep without it. That's it. I hope you have a wonderful day.